What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 24 of our Matplotlib tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be talking about is uh, multiple y axes. So up until this point, each little you know subplot is its own subplot, its own special butterfly. Where what we might want to do from time to time though is have a subplot that has two types of data on it, but maybe those two types of data aren't normalized. And what I mean by normalized is they're maybe of a different scale entirely. So an example of this would be price and volume. So a lot of times price and volume go really hand in hand, but they're of two totally different scales. So volume might be, you know, we might be trading 100,000 shares of a company a day, where price might be 54, right? Uh, so this is where like plotting volume comes in. Now volume, the actual number of volume and the fluctuation of volume, I sp well, the fluctuation is important, but the actual f the number of volume isn't what people really care about. They care more about changes or spikes in volume. So this is an interesting one to share an, a subplot with and to do a multi y axis with. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and close this out and talk about adding that. Where is my mouse? There it is. Sometimes I lose my mouse. I have a lot of monitors and sometimes it just, I don't know, gets lost. So anyway, closing this out, uh, what we're going to do now is up here is where we're defining our all of our axes. What we're going to do is define another axis and that will just, we'll do that underneath this little Y label and we're going to do AX2V and that's just AX2 volume basically and what that's going to be is this is a little shorter definition. All you have to do is do ax2 dot uh, twin x. Whoops, twin x. And that means we are we share that we truly share that x axis. I don't mean to be uh, confusing with share x here, but this one is like a twin x. It's almost like to me they, these like names should switch places, right? A twin means we have another one. It's just but we're separate. But when we're share x, we should be the same. But for some reason, share x means it just has like the same attributes, basically. It sounds like a twin to me. And then when we have twin x, we are actually sharing, truly sharing, as in one thing belonging to two things or multiple things, uh, the x axis. But this is what we have to work with. So twin x really means we're sharing that same x axis and we have a separate y axis. So that's AX2V. Now what we want to do is we're going to come down and basically here is where we're doing all our AX2 stuff. This is annotations if you want to annotate for whatever reason. Now we're going to do a AX2V and then this will be a fill. So we're going to do AX2V.fill underscore between and we want to fill between whoops this date um, let's just let's take this line here so we just can work smart not hard paste and instead of ma1 we're gonna do volume so we got volume a long long time ago many many a tutorial ago and that was up here so that's what we're where we're grabbing volume from just for the record so now we're plotting we're filling between date volume and then um, and actually what it, usually what you'll do is something like this so we fill between the zero mark and volume. So we, we choose zero. Um, we hard code in zero because that's the least amount of volume possible for a company would be zero. So we'll do that with zero. And then what we're going to do, we specify a face color. So comma face color equals. And I mean, we can do really any color. Let's do, um, we'll just choose to do zero, zero, seven, nine, a three. Okay, so we've got a face color now, and then we can add a slight alpha. So because because of what's happening, we're gonna share, let's not add an alpha first actually, so you can see why it's necessary. So let's save and run that real quick, see how we do. So there we go, we've got volume now being plotted on top. And the reason why we would wanna add an alpha is like, what if we zoom in to like here, right? It's literally covering over our stock price. Uh, like in this point, it's like, well, what's the price of stock? We don't even know because silly volume is getting in the way. So first, we would want to add some sort of uh, alpha to it. So we'll say alpha equals 0 0.4. So we can start off with something like that. Um, and that looks a little better. Now, the next thing that we notice is like this, it's got two freaking grids here. Like we've got 
one, it's just really messy. Before our grids were so nice and clean. So, so what we'll do, and we also have this lay seven. <laughs> it's, it's a French seven. Anyway, uh, we'll close this and <laughs> I crack myself up. Uh, what we'll do is first of all, let's get rid of the tick labels. So the way that we can do that is ax 2 v dot axes dot y axes dot set underscore tick labels and we can set them we can we can pick whatever labels we want specifically uh we're gonna say we want specifically nothing <laughs> okay so that's how we do that and then let's get rid of that nasty grid ax2v.grid uh false so now we'll save and run that and whoops uh wh y act let's see ax2v dot y axis dot set tick labels uh we misspelled labels labels again good okay so now uh a few things one we don't have that nasty grid messing things up we also we've got the alpha which we already kind of knew about and we don't have the labels over here again people rarely care about like the the numerical number to volume i mean some people generate uh indicators and do analysis based on volume uh but when it comes to like plotting it on a chart, people don't care about like the numbers necessarily. Some people do, and you might want to include the numbers, and if that's you, go ahead. Uh, but we don't really care that much about it. Plus, you, you can kind of hover it, but I guess that's really not gonna work because we got rid of the labels and stuff. But anyway, um, we'll, we got rid of them. If you want them, go ahead and have them. Now, the next thing that I want us to cover, at least in the case of eBay, it's not really a problem. Um, let's close eBay. Like, let's try a different company. Let's do uh, Goog for Google. And let's see how you're looking. Okay, so Google's a little better of an example So because it, it doesn't have a, a as sharp of a spike. But v this is kind of ugly. Like, if you recall, the eBay one actually looked kind of good, right? The reason why this is ugly is because volume is taking up too much space. We don't want it to take up that much space. So the way that we, we can actually scale that y-axis customly, customly, we can customize it regardless of the uh, proper grammar there. We can do this. We can do ax, whoops, ax2v dot set underscore y limb, and we'll set that between zero and three times the volume uh, uh, dot max. So uh, let's first look at that and we'll explain what's happening there. So now look at that. We've really uh, restrained crazy volume over here and it's just nice and small. We can still see the fluctuations and the spikes, but it's not taking up all of our space. So what is happening here? What we're doing is we're setting the limits of that this y-axis and basically what we're saying is we want the y-axis because like normally without setting this uh matplotlib comes in and it sets the limits right so with our stock price for example because we don't have price going down to zero the the limit starts at 480 and it goes to 580 and it doesn't keep going but what we could say is we could say mm, we want this pricing chart to show between 300 and 800 okay and that would create a lot of white space and it would also take away from the it would it make it would make this graph look less volatile as well so what we do with volume is we're saying we want the volume what we're willing to show a volume that's great that it goes to volume max but actually what we want it to do is we want it to go to three times the volume max so what if we did like i don't know uh 10 times the volume max this would make volume much smaller Okay, so as you can see, volume is much squished down because it's prepared to show up to 10 times what the maximum volume was. So that would be like right here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? So um, that's what's happening there. I, three is a pretty good one, but you know, somewhere around three is, is good enough, just enough to squish it down a little bit uh, to keep it from you know violating the rest of our chart and our prices and stuff. And obviously there's gonna be points where they connect, like low points where volume spiked. Yeah, they overlap, but that is what the alpha is, is there for after all. Okay, so this chart is almost done. The only thing we're lacking on this chart is a good legend. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna start talking about legendizing this, that's a word, trust me, legendizing this graph 
uh, and we're gonna add basically you know the, the price and volume maybe here high minus low here uh, and then the moving averages here like right now this just says moving averages but we have literally no freaking clue you know like okay what kind of moving averages people want to know like what are the moving averages being used that sort of thing so we'll add that here and uh, we've covered how to do legends before but we did not cover customizing the legends at all so that next tutorial that's mainly what's going to be about is adding that legend and making sure that legend is not conflicting uh, with you know other numbers and stuff on here so with a chart like this it's kind of it's kind of hard so a lot of times what you could do is you could make the legend outside of the chart or something like that but we outside of this chart we've got another chart and above this chart we've got a chart below this chart we've got a you guessed it chart so how to handle for stuff like that and so on is what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial and that'll really wrap up the kind of uh graphing customization and handling and share x and all this kind of crazy stuff that we can do with matplotlib that is fairly common uh, to be required so if you have questions or comments up to this point please do feel free to leave them below otherwise as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time